I've done one weed comic, I think. One or two. Yeah. One they, was about like weed that you smoked and it turned everybody into like uh serial killers, I think. Uh I think, the other one was like a superhero weed comic. So this is a, a a little bit different of a take, you know? And I can appreciate that. Yeah. So we're just gonna double check, of course, make sure we're good. I looks like we are. Keep it going for just a few more seconds to make sure we're not dropping frames. But right now we're at zero zero. I've been getting in the habit of turning off my computer. Uh, sometimes I let my computer run for uh, days. I don't want to say how many days in a row, but sometimes this bad boy does not get a chance to breathe. But I figure if if I'm always running, why shouldn't it? You know, if I have to suffer, why shouldn't the computer? Great. Why shouldn't the computer? J. Michael Miller, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. What have you been up to? You been playing any cool video games lately? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> Leave. I sold my PlayStation so I can make comics. Yeah, I was on the verge of selling fucking mine, dude. Like, it was so crazy. My, uh, I was working 13-hour shift. Car started bleeding coolant. And then, like, you know, you're a dad. You get it. So, like, I'm, like, in the middle of the shift. I'm already flustered. I'm, like... I need to go home. I need to drop this off to the garage immediately. Like that's, you know, cause you gotta take it step by step. Um, and then my other car broke down. I'm like, all right, you know, what are these odds? Uh, and then I'm like, I'm just selling the PS5. Cause if it's a head gasket, the head gasket I know is gonna at least be like 1500, 2000 worst case scenario. I need to acquire as much capital as humanly possible. Uh, <laughs> and that was like the first thing to, to, uh, that I put up. Luckily I didn't have to sell it though, but I, you know, that's the struggle. I've been trying to come up with some scripts of my own and it's, you want to make sure your creative team is paid fairly and, 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 and taken care of first. And it's like, that's like the hardest struggle of writing comics, right? Like you could sit there, stare at a screen all you want. Uh, eventually the words are going to come out, but you can't just like stare at money and, and have money come out. Like, <laughs> the idea yeah, but, problem, it's the paper. <laughs> We have uh, Joey uh, Galvez joining us. Wake and bake. What's up? Spark it up, everybody. If you have, you know, your doobies, your bongs, your, uh, hey, well, what's the Austin Powers shit where it's like pancake and a bong? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get it ready. Get it sparked up. We're going to be hyping this chat up. Frames have not dropped, so I think this is going to be a fantastic day, a fantastic stream. I'm ready to go. J. Michael Miller, how are you feeling? Lit. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's begin this interview in three, two, one. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie creator interview. It's your Cape Crusader, Cody, and we're keeping it geekly with our returning guest, J. Michael Miller, the J. Michael Miller. We're here to break down Puff Puff Parent and everything in between what have you been up to man i know we were just talking backstage but that part's going to be edited out so <laughs> working on comics i went to gem state comic con a couple of weeks ago for my first table did a local event here how'd that go pretty good i was surprised actually that the small local event i sold more in one day than both days of comic con <laughs> that was still fine <laughs> So, I mean, local, are we talking like, uh, like you knew a majority of the people walking in or it was a light, like, or do you live in a big city? Like I live in the Boise area, but a few years ago we moved to CUNA, which is like a really small town that's five or 10 minutes from Boise. And so the town only has like a few hundred or thousand in the, the limits of the city. And so it's pretty small, like a local community. There's only two high schools in this city. The Boise has way more, but it was two just high schools. That's place. You know, I, I grew up in a place called Bloomville. Uh, we had an elementary, and then you had to get bus to uh, like a high school. Uh, like, I feel like such a boomer right now. Like, I, I had I had to walk to the bus stop in the uh, snow and the rain. It wasn't three feet of snow. Uh, occasionally, maybe like four to five inches, but um, it still was a lot of walking, and I did not like it. Uh, but one thing I did like doing when I what's up i even fell in the snow once you fell in the snow and they, that snow will get you every time i just i don't understand what it is about these old timers and having such hellacious weather but one thing i do remember as a kid is uh puff puff passing we have an interesting interesting story about puff puff parent well what's this about 
Puff Puff Parent is about a former father and dare essay winner that he doesn't have a problem with medical marijuana, but he gets prescribed it and has to rethink everything. And he kind of used to think that's not for me, but it's fine for somebody. And now that it's him, it's a different story and he's got to deal with that. So where did the, did the inspiration for this come from? Um, it came uh, back in 2019 before I moved to comics. I was focusing on like short films and TV and I wanted to do a sitcom called Puff Puff Parent. That was basically the same thing. And I wrote a script. I submitted it to like a pitch festival. Got some good feedback, then moved to comics and dropped it completely. <laughs> so uh, you have you have children. Uh, are they in dare? No, they are not. My oldest is in third grade, so maybe soon. It's 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 funny because you know I was checking out interiors and everything, and uh, the dare. Like my daughter just graduated dare. Like she, like she, like so. I, I still have it fresh in my head, and it just felt, uh, it felt like the perfect balance for everything. Just seeing how weed is treated, you know, how weed is viewed, um, how there's a lot of misconception about it. There's a lot of, you know, painting it bad early on and early. You know, I remember when I went to Dare. Um, I remember the first time I was like. I remember the first time I was offered a joint, all right? And I remember because of D.A.R.E., I was so nervous. I was like, no, whoa, there's rat poisoning. There's rat poisoning in that. Like, <laughs> D.A.R.E. taught me there's, there, that, that, that's going to, like, hurt me. I'm, I'm not going to do that. And it's like, I, I've, I don't think I've ever in how many years found, like, you know, rat poisoning in weed or anything like that. I also told somebody no in ninth grade when I got offered my first joint, too, because of D.A.R.E. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, that no didn't last long, maybe like five minutes. So uh, I gave in a peer pressure quite quickly, but <laughs> I didn't until I was 25 and in a different state and tried for the first time an edible. An edible. So that is interesting because, you know, when you smoke, it's, you can get a little bit of a body buzz, but I feel edibles are the ones that really hit you with that. Like how, what was your first time like? My first time was actually horrible <laughs> because I, <laughs> I, I took it way in the evening. I was waiting for food. I was at somebody else's house with cats. I'm not allergic to cats themselves, but outside cats get into the stuff that I'm allergic to. So mm -hmm. that I like passed out and then I woke up with red eyes and allergies and somebody's waiting to take me to dinner. And I'm like, I promise it's just allergies. Oh my God. I remember... So I, dude, I have so many crazy stories, especially with Mama Geekly. Mama Geekly used to catch me all the time. <laughs> I remember the one time, like she she comes upstairs and I'm just hanging out my window to the middle of the summer. She's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> we got Joey D schedule, uh, medical uh, cannabis on. I think even uh, recreational. Um, I don't know. Like I'm not trying to turn this into like a whole like you know thing, but. What you do is what you do. We doesn't, I feel like, hurt anyone as long as you're not, like, driving and putting other people at risk, you know, or or, or getting consumed by it, I guess. Like, doing it, like, nonstop yeah. and, 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 like, you know, bed rotting and, like, you know, not able to, like, live a productive life. I, and that that's to everybody's own, like, you know, description and what they view as a productive life. But weed's, like... It's always been viewed as the gateway drug, but let's be real. Uh, trauma is, is the gateway drug, I feel, right? Like trauma, um, yeah. uh, alcoholism, I feel. Alcohol, as uh, if I'm not, I, I, I read it somewhere, uh, same chemical compound as like uh, heroin, like the, just the addiction part of it um, and breaking away from it uh, can leave you medically devastated or or even worse you can die from literally detoxing from alcohol I, i've never heard of anyone dying from detoxing weed i have not either but yeah, it's definitely true that trauma is actually the gateway drug because if you're sad enough people are going to find whatever they mm -hmm. need to get past it but oh joe joe's joe, like yo i'm consumed by mj all day for... i met people who don't do anything though I, yeah even if you don't do anything i don't know as long as you're like taking care of yourself i guess that's all that matters.
All right. <laughs> we have uh, It's Axo. Trauma is the gateway drug. Absolutely. You know, I've been doing a lot of re uh, reading, a lot of research, and they always want to paint a picture of like what causes the start to addiction and everything. And I, I truly believe it's like, you know, having that wound and you're trying to fill that wound with something and find relief and then you want to find it again. And sometimes finding relief is all about just a little puff puff, you know, and so tell us a little bit more about this comic. We have some gorgeous interiors, some gorgeous covers. Uh, who's the creative team involved? Um, I'm the writer. Max Pinelli is the interior artist, main cover artist, and B cover variant artist. Um, letters is Andrew Lucan. And then on campaign management, we have E Collective, Joey Galvez, and Benjamin W. Morse that did campaign graphic campaign management, helping out on social media, a lot of stuff. Uh, we've got Lane Lloyd doing a variant cover and Marcus Jimenez doing a variant cover too. And the logo is by Chris Benamati from Band of Bars. So we have a Dare essay winner turn into now a weed user. Uh, that has to be a very complex feeling, you know, a really hard like thing to work through, I would feel. Um, what inspired you to, to create this character in particular? I know you said this kind of started off as a different media uh, format, but uh, for our protagonist, like where did his inspiration come from? Uh, well, for the protagonist, um, it's kind of a combination of things that I've seen and experienced, and then also other family members and friends that have gone through similar things. Um, I really comes from, I was in D.A.R.E., and I told you that I told somebody no to it before. I <laughs> really have struggled to like always be myself sometimes, like I don't want to do the wrong thing. I want to be good. Mm -hmm. And that's like how we're trained when we're growing up. And it depends like how much you absorb that, how much it is. That's why in the log line in the campaign, it says pectophobic, which is like an irrational fear of committing a sin or a crime. So like you're paranoid, even if weed is legal, that you're being bad and you're going to get called on the cops <laughs> i oh my god this is just flooding back early childhood memories um 13 years old pop can and little sewing needle t -t 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 -t, uh looking around the corner it's crazy uh because weed used to be very illegal back in the day you would get in big trouble for it and now it's like not you know it's like a misdemeanor it's and it's crazy kind of how we looked at it and how it's been viewed it over the years and how it slowly has been used for medicinal use and, and recreational purposes. Um, now, with our, our main character battling this uh, and also being a dad and balancing that, you know, what type of hijinks can we expect to see him get into? Well, uh, he's pectophobic, so it doesn't just apply to weed. So he's kind of anxious and always wants to make sure he's the best person he can be even if that makes him be worse because he's nervous mm -hmm. and so the whole point of him getting the medical marijuana is so he can kind of slow down so he can see that and understand that and figure some things out in his life and um so he's already a good dad but it makes him like the best dad ever it's like danny tanner that gets a medical marijuana prescription i love that you know and that's a thing in itself, and I, I think uh, every I think every dad goes through that where you always feel like you're not doing enough. You're not. You could always be doing more. Um, I, I I battle that almost every single day. Like you you want to set the best example you can, and being a parent in itself is hard. But like battling what he's battling, and then being you know a dad that sounds just. Sounds impossible almost. Um, what did your script writing look like uh, between you and the artist? Did you have a lot of things you wanted to make sure uh, was was done or did you kind of let him have the wheel a little bit? Um, I always try to do a little bit of back and forth. I try to paint the scene that I want, but then kind of like Pokemon, I have to leave some areas blank so he can fill it in or they can fill it in or mm -hmm. how they So it's a doctor's office that they're in, but put whatever you want on the walls. <laughs> 
You got Joey saying Band of Bards all day. Absolutely. Shout out to Band of Bards, as well as this link we just dropped in chat. This is the Kickstarter link. Be sure to check it out if you're able to back. We would love to see that. But simply putting that link wherever you can helps just as much. Word of mouth costs absolutely nothing. And I'm sure you're going to have a friend or a family member who's going to love this comic. We have Joey saying, hey, I get stoned and I immediately become a better person. You know, I, I, I will say um, it's a really nice stress release. It's a really nice. Um, Everybody's you know, different. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Everybody, but, you know, a nice coffee, a nice puff. Always perfect remedy to the day. So how many pages are we looking at for this book? Uh, this is body narrative edition. And so it's going to have the first 13 story pages of a 36 page future book. It's going to have a lot of behind the scenes, a one page backup story with art by Lane Lloyd and letters by Reed Hinckley Barnes called O-Town Road. Just a little fun comic that still takes place in the Puff Puff parent world. I love that. Is that a, a little Nas X song? Well, Old Town. It's Old Town Road because it's about music in the. Uh, okay, I like when you said that. I was like, hold on, wait a minute, <laughs> something ain't right. <laughs> so, is this gonna be an ongoing series, or are you looking at just doing a one shot with that thirty six page? I mean, where where are we gonna see this universe go? Um, it's. I'd like to do a series of one shots. I want you to be able to pick it up at any time and not have to worry about missing out on before mm -hmm. kind of like on tv show that history matters but you can still just watch an episode of abbott elementary and laugh so i'd like to do more than one one shot but for now it's one volume and then we'll go from there i've got tons of stuff planned like i said it was going to be a tv show so i had like 13 episodes for the first season and three more seasons planned so i've got ideas <laughs> You know, I think it's time to head over to uh, the campaign and do a little puff puff pass in ourselves. Do you remember the uh, anti weed commercials from back in the day? The uh, omelet girl, like, don't smoke weed or you'll become her. And it's like this girl just becoming like a balloon on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. I feel like I have so much pressure inside of me. If I could just deflate a little bit, maybe, maybe I'd be able to uh, de stress a little bit. Um, so right off the bat, I, I love the budding narrative edition, the name, just budding. That's perfect. Uh, and then the goal, 1,420, like everything is like right on the nose with this. It's, it's gorgeous. Who is this dare officer though? This guy looks fearsome. He's a dare officer that's there to tell Henry that he needs to resist drugs and violence. And then right there is the creative team, of course, guys. We'll give a little bit of a focus on them. Um, man, awesome team here. Very strong. I, I love all the variants as well. This cover right here is gorgeous. So tell us a little bit about the cover. Um, so this is the main cover by Max Pinelli. And so um, it's got Henry in the center with his eyes cut off. And he's holding his daughter, Harper. And he's next to his wife, Harley. And... He's holding a bag from Dave's Dink Dispensary. <laughs> I love that. Is that like a playoff of a dispensary that's close to you? No, it's just alliteration. <laughs> you know, I, I love that. That's good, though. That's good. And then this cover is just gorgeous. We have, of course, the dab pens, the edibles, uh, the brownie edibles, um, the, you know, the spliff right there. Is this a bong? Like, man, this yeah. is gorgeous. This is this needs to be you should make this a poster. <laughs> Yeah, there's a print. It's also a lighter. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. It looks really cool, actually. It says, yeah, it's very trippy. Uh, I, I love the mouth. This thing is uh, eating the brownie. Just gorgeous, dude. Did you kind of just tell Max to do his thing? Or or, or did, did you? It was the first cover that was done, and it was just going to be a variant before Max took over the interior art, too. And so I told him that I was thinking something without the main characters, but something that kind of just included a bunch of references to mm -hmm. marijuana. And so he had fun with it. Yeah, this thing is gorgeous. Holy crap. And then this variant by the one and the only Lane Lloyd. I love this. This It feels like um, a playoff of uh, Dr. Dre's The Chronic almost. 
Yeah, it's an homage to that album cover. And then the trade dress was done by Joey Galvez with help from Benjamin W. Morrison. The whole team really nailed it and made the whole thing come together. Yeah, this is cool. This is cool. I, I want to get a Dare shirt again. I, I, you know, it's as a kid, like I remember you graduated in like what, six and, you know, fifth, sixth grade, you felt cool wearing it. And then in seventh grade, when you start smoking weed, you're like, I'm not going to wear the Dare shirt anymore. And then like you wear it uh, just because like it's, it's ironic when you're like 30, you're like, ah, uh, I'm in Dare. <laughs> we got, uh, it's Axel, weed makes me sick, but I saw Jay's preview and had me dying laughing. Yes, this looks like such a fun comic this cover right here is just absolutely stunning too marcus nailed it i he came to me and pitched that and it was fantastic there's no denying how good it was i love like how the arm is like melting too it's very cool so let's take that first hit for free and check out some preview pages uh this of course is 18 years ago so this is set in 2020 that's before uh the pandemic isn't it yeah so it's also pre-pandemic world weird isn't that crazy it's weird to think about that oh my goodness the classic egg cracking it this is your brain on drugs i love how this dude has like a, a mohawk too he looks like so intimidating yeah he was supposed to be like an alpha male type officer and then of course we had the little sonic nod in here i noticed that i see you j michael miller but i love loved it too i didn't right even... here like this, uh, like, I don't know if this is like a filter on, on, on over top of the art, but like, this is so gorgeous. Like the, the way the hair is just textured. It is. I was really blown away with that first panel specifically because of the filter or however effect that he used the Sonic reference. He's got that, you know, classic cool S on the whiteboard. Oh my God. I seen something where it's like, there's another step and it's like a couple more lines and it makes it look 3d. Like even it, like, I don't know how to explain it, but I was like, what the hell? Um, this is awesome. I seen another awesome nod. I don't know if it's in the, we'll, we'll scroll down if it's in there. I wanted to point it out. Um, but right here, like marijuana, the devil's lettuce, uh, it'll kill you. Like, it's just crazy to think there was so much propaganda that, like against it in the beginning like that. Yeah. And then I love this panel too. And he's like in violence and violence and just the face. Like <laughs> it was great. When I, what's up? Bro in the violence too. What resistance is that? And then of course we have, uh, so what is his diagnosis uh, exactly? Like what does he need this weed for? Um, he has a lot of things. He's got anxiety, depression, um, it's got problems sleeping, and um, it's not as diagnosed yet. If we get to tell more stories in the next volume, um, he's got PTSD, but like not for more or anything. Mm -hmm. One thing I really like too is you know we see like the traditional panels like with like the flashback. It feels a little bit more. Uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for. Maybe like retroy. Like right here is like we have a little bit like the panel, like the background, like bleeds into the, like the quarter splash page. So I, I like the way Max did this page layout. It's like really cool. Yeah, I do too. Okay, so we do have it. Like right here, is this a, a nod to your first comic? Uh, so I've got the dinosaur in the bottom. That's a nod to my comic. And then Dog of War is a reference to a comic that Max drew. Okay, I see. I, I seen that, and I was wondering if that was maybe just like a nod to maybe God of War, and like you guys were playing around. But that's cool that it's actually you guys were able to include your first work into this. There's gonna be more references too. Yeah, these interiors are. Max is just absolutely killing it. So let's go ahead. Let's check out these rewards, guys. If you're watching. Check it out with us. Pull it up. If you're able to back, we would love to see it. That is the best way to celebrate 420. Spark that J. Wake and make back. Sure, yeah, ma wake and back. I love that. You should make that a sticker or something. <laughs> wake and back and uh, support this comic. And if you can't put this on Twitter and Facebook, word of mouth costs you absolutely nothing to do. So $1 for the Indie Digital Bundle. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, like most Kickstarter campaigns for comics, there's an Indie Digital Bundle that's going to have a set of comics from different independent creators in the community. Uh, what titles are we looking at? 
Um, we're looking at decay, number one, and wishful thinking, and Hallowed North and some others, too. Okay. So uh, we have uh, the, the digital copy coming in, five bucks. You can get an early bird special at eight. So how long is that early bird running for? For the first two days. So you got just 48 hours to make that happen, guys. We got the $8 digital deluxe coming hot off the press at eight. Uh, Cosmo, uh, Comics and Cosmos digital catch up at nine. So how many books are uh, in that bundle? Um, you're going to get Kid Cretaceous number one, The Healer's Blade number one, Prologue, and then Puff Puff Parent number one, Bunny Narrative Edition. And then also some short digital comics like Moving Day, Overloaded. Let's go. Look at you putting out the work too. It's I'm so happy to see you uh, coming out with a larger catalog. It, it almost feels like every couple of months you're you're putting out a new title, Jay. It's awesome. I'm trying. This is the biggest year yet. <laughs> we have that standard cover coming in at ten dollars. We have the standard cover B coming in at twelve, and then C at twelve as well. So I think awesome prices on on those two variants. Just two dollars more, and just for five bucks more, you can get that awesome cover from Marcus for fifteen. We have uh, the Comics and Cosmo Physical Catch-Up at 20, so that, that'll get you the three books yeah. physically. And then 22 bucks, pick any two covers. And there's a lot of, I mean, they're all gorgeous, so I, I don't know. I don't know which one I would choose, honestly. These are all like hot covers. I love it. And then a hollow foil. Jay, you're, you're just like, man, I love it. 25. This cover looks like it's crazy, too. Yeah. Like and the I swirls right there. Yeah, that is cool. And then signed and remarked at 20 bucks, 44 for the hollow catch-up, so three different holographic covers. I, you know, what is it about holographic stuff? You know, I remember being just, They're just shook like, to my core, Pokemon, you know, on the bus, holographic cards. I could not get enough of them. <laughs> They're just really shiny. Oops, hold on. There we go. All right, and then we have all covers at 45. A stash box at 60. This is cool, dude. So yeah. That has a grinder, too? Yeah. That's fucking happen. insane. <laughs> right. That is so cool, dude. How, how'd you end up getting a grinder? I think you're the first uh, interview, uh, comic inter interview I've ever done where they had a grinder. I just thought it would be really cool to have some like accessories and add-ons that really reflected what the campaign is trying to talk about mm -hmm. so added a grinder and a lighter to the campaign did they when did they do this i i thought the rewards you had to click on the other tab uh, did they put the the scroll back on the side yeah they put the scroll back on the side no crap dude i i literally have done been interviewing almost every day and like that's the first time I've noticed that. Like, did it just happen today? Um, I'm not sure. I That's feel crazy. So we have uh, the big box. Pick any two covers, $111. Um, a lighter, some stickers extra. Uh, <clears throat> is this another sticker right here by the grinder too? Um, let me look. Yeah, that's a sticker. That's so cool, man. I I, I love that you have a, a lighter as well. Man, this is this is so cool. What's this uh right here behind the grinder too? Is that a like a, a art print? And then there's custom oh, it's a print. It's a print. I gotcha. No, that that box is so cool, man. Jay, you have some really cool merchandise in this. 150 bucks. Be in the book. Uh, so are they looking at being like a student or a, like a person in the crowd? What type of role do you think uh, you see them having? There's only a few slots open, but they're open to either be an employee at the dispensary or a customer at the dispensary. Get the uh, Cosmo collection or Cosmic collection. Get the comics and Cosmos and uh, catalog for 160 bucks. And then uh, do you have add-ons? We do. The the graphics needed to be finished a little bit, but they are listed with images on the reward section. Oh, okay. All right. So let's scroll over there. Wait a minute. If you click the there, there we go. There we go. Oh, it's made it complicated. Kickstarter just hating. Um, let's check out some of these add-ons. Uh, is uh right here? Yeah, optional add-on. So you get a hemp bookmark. Uh, the art print at five, writer's remark five, 
Uh, you can get that Healer's Blade Prologue for five bucks, Kid Cretaceous for five, and an additional copy of Cover A for ten. That lighter for ten. I mean, dude, this merch is great. I am digging this. You get oh, you have a Dare shirt. Do Dare? Do you dare to read or create comics? This is so cool, dude. Holy crap! Twenty eight bucks. That is awesome. And then a grinder, custom herb grinder, at thirty five. I remember every time I had to go into a head shop. You remember that anytime you went to the head shop, you always had to be like, I uh, want to get a water pipe. <laughs> <laughs> I need a water tobacco pipe, uh, not for marijuana, not 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 for weed. <laughs> like the second you said anything about that, you got kicked out because they thought you're a cop or something, dude. It was crazy, just in, like the pre-pandemic world. Yeah. It's 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 wild to think about. J. Michael Miller, for anyone who might be on the fence about backing this campaign, if you had just a few moments to address them, what would you like to say to him? Uh, it doesn't matter if you don't like weed. The book is more about family and like learning how to heal yourself and be able to slow down and fix things. So if you're running 90 to nothing all the time, you're going to have some wear and tear and break down eventually. Things have to get fixed. So that's kind of what Puff Puff Parent is about is slowing down and learning how to be a better parent, even if you already are a great one. I feel so insanely called out by that. Like, I've been running, like, 92, like, 110, like, just, like, the last, like, phew, I don't even remember. Um, and uh, taking that break is essential. Like, having that little me time, that little self-care to kind of, like, reset, you know, everything. Reset your body. Reset your mind. Um, awesome comic. Awesome interiors. I, I The campaign looks gorgeous, too. Like, all the, uh, like the, the icons and the images for... Like the rewards and stuff are just phenomenal, Jay. This campaign looks fantastic. Um, you've been on the show before. You know the drill. We always ask for a little bit of advice and then what you're consuming outside of creating. So as someone who's, I mean, you've been pretty hard, working hard uh, the last couple months uh, and coming out with different series. For anyone looking to, to do the same, to spice up their type of genre writings or, or to venture into new uncharted territory, what would be your biggest piece of advice to them? Uh, my biggest piece of advice is don't be afraid to tell the story that you want to tell and make sure that you write down your ideas. That way you don't forget them. Like go for a walk and that's where a lot of great ideas will happen. Like it, for some reason you just go on a walk around the neighborhood and like 12 things pop into place that you didn't even know you were worried about. Mm -hmm. And so you're just able to, you need to trust yourself too because how many TV shows and movies have we all watched? How many YouTube videos, books? We've like consumed every type of genre. We've watched and read different types of media. And so you know what type of story makes a story. So you can probably tell it pretty good too if you just believe in yourself. Awesome advice. So Jay, what have you been up to? What video games are you playing? Books you're reading? TV shows that you're watching? Have you seen the new Fallout? I've not seen the new Fallout. Uh, Okie dokie. <laughs> um, but what, what else are you up to, man? Um, I've been catching up on reading some comics recently. I just caught up on Undiscovered Country. I read Helen of Windhorn. I was like surprised how well I enjoyed that comic. Um, Dawn Runner was pretty good. I ran. Which to uh geekly listeners across there um might be interviewing them uh for comic book yeti so just throwing that out there very excited <laughs> so jay i appreciate it i hope you're having a fantastic 420 everyone else i hope you're having a fantastic 420 as well be sure to roll it up light it up and back this project right i think that's another good saying we just coined there Right there's the link. Hit it up. Be sure to do that. Put it on Twitter, or Facebook. Word of mouth costs you absolutely nothing to do. That being said, I need to get ready for a 10-hour shift on this lovely, lovely 420. Uh, not so much puff, puff passing for me as work, work, and slinging pizza. So with that being said, it is time for us to wrap things up. Roll it up. Hope you all have a fantastic day. But most importantly, guys, keep it geekly. <laughs>